Hey guys, welcome back to my series talking about the most famous cryptid slash myth in every U.S. state. We're now on part four of five. We're in the northeastern region of the U.S. So if you're from the northeast, follow along and maybe you'll hear one that's close to you. Also, even if you're not from the northeast, you need to subscribe right now. Let's get into it. First up, we have Maine with the Spectre Moose. Have you guys ever been up north somewhere where they're like really nice? Well, in Maine, even their monsters are nice. So, if you're from Maine, I don't know if you've heard of the Spectre Moose, but it's a legend about a giant white moose that's almost transparent. It stands at 15 feet tall, has antlers that are 12 feet across, with 22 points on each side. It's a big boy. The story of the Spectre Moose started in 1891 when it was first seen by a hunting guide near Lobster Lake in Maine. Then it was sighted shortly after by another hunter who tried to shoot it. This hunter said he fired shotgun slugs at it and they had no effect at all on the moose, they just bounced off of it. And uh, yeah, then the moose charged at him, of course. The next year, a hunter in New York named Howard was hunting when he also shot at a huge moose. He said it weighed a ton and was as tall as a camel and that once again, he hit the moose with its bullets but it was not harmed at all by the shots and it charged at Howard. A little bit later in 1899, the moose became famous because the New York Times published an article about the moose and all of its sightings. And this goes on for a while, there's a lot of other sightings in the early 1900s um, all around Maine and the surrounding northern states, but the locals in this area are quite serious about this moose, they say it definitely exists. So it's said to appear in town, I guess to kind of warn people, kind of like Mothman does, uh, right before something bad happens. So that's nice of him. Which this allegedly happened in 2002 when the moose started to have sightings in Franklin, Maine, right before the town's restaurant burned down. Another thing about this moose, there was a mission in Red Dead Redemption 2 where you could hunt the uh, legendary moose and it was supposed to be like the Spectre Moose, which was really cool. Moving on to New Hampshire, we have the Woods Devil. This one's pretty creepy, honestly. I couldn't find a whole lot on it. Um, but I'll tell you what I got. Also known as the Woods Devil of Coos County, some people say that it may be a single Bigfoot or a group of Bigfoots, and that they've been roaming the woodlands of New Hampshire since the 1930s. They're said to be really skinny and like 7-9 feet tall with shaggy tannish gray hair all over, and they just overall look horrifying. What's even more horrifying about them is that they have similar behavior to the hide behind, which means that they always hide just out of sight and can blend in really well with their surroundings. So well, in fact, that if they have no tree to hide behind, they will just stand perfectly still and can be mistaken for a tree. Hikers have described hearing screams of these creatures echoing the woods of Coos County, uh, I guess since around the 1930s. And another theory I like about them is that they're possibly the offspring of a Bigfoot and a Wendigo. No. Unless, no. All right, moving on to Vermont. In Vermont, we have the Northfield Pigman. So in Vermont, there's an urban legend about a boy named Sam Harris who went missing. And the story goes that this boy that went missing either became the Pigman or was eaten by the monster who was the Pigman. So a little backstory on Sam Harris. He was known to slaughter pigs, eat their entrails, hollow out the pig's head, and then wear it around town like a mask terrorizing the locals in Northfield, Vermont. It was also said that along with all of his terrorizing, he would also lie with pigs, and that the pig man was possibly a result of his offspring. A couple years later, after his disappearance in 1951, some high school kids were hanging out behind the school when they said a thing came walking out of the woods on two human legs. They said it was naked, covered in white hair, and was wearing a hollowed out pig's head like a sort of mask. So this whole thing was possibly a Halloween story that was told in the area, um, but others think that this is a real pigman hybrid or even a cannibalistic Bigfoot. All right, moving on to Massachusetts. The Dover Demon of Massachusetts was the subject of an intensive scare that occurred during the 1970s when three separate witnesses said they saw it. There's not much of a story behind it. Um, three separate 17 year olds in the area in the town of Dover uh, spotted the creature gallivanting in the woods. The Dover Demon was described by them as looking kind of like a gray alien, uh, but instead it had like orangish tan skin, and it had a really big head, a small stick-like body, and it was only like four feet tall. Here's a drawing from one of the witnesses of the Dover Demon. They said they didn't feel like they were in danger when they saw it, but they were terrified. Some say that the Dover Demon could possibly have been a lost baby moose, or even an escaped monkey from the zoo. All right, Rhode Island. 
The Mercy Brown Vampire Incident of Rhode Island. This one's more of a legend than a cryptid. According to Wikipedia, this is one of the best documented cases of people doing a ritual to banish an undead manifestation. Also, this was part of a even wider New England vampire panic that was going on at the time. Basically, in the late 1800s, a farmer named George Brown kept having his family members die without explanation. First, George's wife died, followed by his daughter Mary, then his daughter Mercy Brown. Because of all these deaths, friends and neighbors of George's family believed that one of the dead family members was a vampire. Keep in mind at this time, it was normal to think that multiple deaths in a family was possibly the result of undead activity uh, because of the folklore in the area. So George Brown was then persuaded to give permission to make sure the bodies of his loved ones were really dead. So then some of the villagers checked the bodies of his wife and then his one other daughter and they saw that they were decomposing as usual. However, his other daughter Mercy Brown exhibited almost no decomposition and still had blood in her heart. This was taken as a sign that she was in fact an undead vampire and was causing all of the strange deaths. So, they did what any normal person would do, and they burned her heart and liver, mixed it with water to create a tonic, and gave it to her sick brother, Edwin, as an effort to resolve the illness that he also had. However, Edwin ended up dying two months later to tuberculosis, which at the time they had no idea. All these deaths were being caused by tuberculosis, and pretty much... This is what the entire New England vampire scare was about. Everybody was getting tuberculosis and they kept blaming it on supernatural things like vampires. Definitely more interesting, yeah. Also, her body was likely not decomposing because she was buried in a crypt above ground in freezer-like conditions, so yeah. All right, Connecticut, the melon heads of Connecticut. This one's really interesting, I like this one. So apparently there's this story about legendary beings that live in the forests of Michigan, Connecticut, and Ohio. It's basically about these creatures that look like they're remotely human, but they have bulbous, melon-like heads. And there's a couple variations of the myth. The more popular one that I like is that in Fairfield County, Connecticut, it was the location of an asylum for the criminally insane. And that back in 1960, it burned down, resulting in the death of all of the staff and most of the patients. However, 10 to 20 of the asylum patients survived and escaped into the woods. And the legend goes that the melon head's appearance is the result of them having to resort to cannibalism in order to survive the harsh winters in that area. And also from inbreeding from each other, which caused them to develop hydrocephalus, which is a condition where the brain and skull swell up because there's a bunch of fluid in the skull. The other variation of the story is that the melon heads were descendants of a colonial era family that was banished after accusations of witchcraft. And they also look like that because of inbreeding. The melon heads allegedly prey upon humans who wander into their territory, and it's said that people who pass through Fairfield, Connecticut drive really fast because they fear they'll be attacked by them. Which I'm not sure if the people in that area actually do that today though. If you know, tell me. All right, moving on to New York. We got New York Champ. Some people call this the Loctus Monster of the United States. Champ or Champy is the name given to a lake monster that's living in Lake Champlain in New York. Like the Loctus Monster, most people regard Champ as a legend, but some speculate that it's possibly a surviving plesiosaur. The history behind the legend actually comes from centuries ago when the Iroquois people told legends about giant snakes in that area. In one of the first sightings in 1819, Captain Crum of the ship Blagua Bay saw a black monster that stretched 187 feet. According to him, the monster had a head like a seahorse, eyes the color of peeled onions, only three teeth, and a white star on its forehead. The most recent report took place in 2005 when a fisherman allegedly got pictures of a plesiosaur-like animal opening and closing its mouth. When FBI forensics analyzed this photo, they said it looked authentic, but that it wasn't an animal. It was actually just a log. Sad. Oh, and there's also a village in Port Henry in New York that celebrates Champ Day where they erect a giant statue of Champ. I need to go. All right, New Jersey. This one's pretty creepy. This is the Jersey Devil. According to legend, when a woman in 1736 found out that she was about to have her 13th child, she was really upset. She cursed the unborn child, saying that it was going to be the devil. Whoopsies. When time came for her to give birth, the child came out normal, 
but then suddenly changed into a hooved creature with a goat head, bat wings, and a forked tail before it flew up the chimney into the woods. Some versions of the story say that the mother was actually a witch and that the child's father was the devil himself. And some other stories say that the haunting of this creature in the woods there was so bad that a pastor actually attempted to exorcise the Pine Barrens area in New Jersey. It's said that the Jersey Devil often glows and can breathe fire or poison water from its breath, which are both classic dragon characteristics. There's also been many alleged sightings throughout the 1900s, and it's said that the Jersey Devil is still haunting New Jersey to this day. All right, Delaware, we got the Selbyville Swamp Monster. So back in the 1920s, people started to report hearing screams at night out in the swamps of Delaware. People also began to claim that they were being chased by a huge hairy creature. Um, there's a couple accounts of that, apparently. Then, 40 years later, in 1964, there was all of a sudden a massive amount of sightings of this monster that people claimed to be chased by, and people were freaking out because this alleged monster was seen so frequently. However, it was later discovered that a local resident named Fred, who had grown up hearing stories of the swamp monster, was actually dressing up and running through the woods in order to help sell newspapers for his friend, which worked really well. And he said the main reason he had to stop pretending to be the monster is because there was a bunch of people that were trying to hunt him in the woods and he got shot at quite a bit. So it's a good reason to stop. Pennsylvania, we have the Squonk. So the Squonk is a mythical creature that's said to live in the Hemlock Forests in Northern Pennsylvania. This is another creature that's known as a fearsome critter that came from folklore stories told by lumberjacks. So the squonk is said to be completely miserable. It's a pig looking thing with misfitting skin, it's absolutely covered in warts and moles, and it's so ashamed of its appearance that it hides from plain sight all the time. It's said to spend most of its time weeping, mainly because of how ugly it is. And legend has it that if you corner it, it can dissolve itself into tears to escape being captured. He's a really sad boy. Maryland. This is Chessy, which is another sea monster. It's said to live in Chesapeake Bay, where sightings have appeared in local media since 1936. It was actually first sighted by a military helicopter who said they saw something reptilian and unknown that was in the water in Bush River. It's been described by eyewitnesses as looking like a serpent-like creature with flippers that was about 25 to 40 feet long and swims through the water like a snake. There's even footage of what many believe is the monster that was taken in the 1980s. While some believe it is a monster, others believe it very possibly could be an oarfish because oarfish were known as sea monsters for a really long time. They actually weren't officially discovered until 1772, which is really recent for an animal discovery. But oarfish are like 26 feet long and they also look very similar to a giant sea serpent, which, I mean, why not? You know, it, it pretty much is a sea monster. I mean, I'll give it that classification. Why not? All right, that does it for all the Northeast states. This is part four of the five-part series. Next time, we'll be looking at the Southeast states, so don't miss out on the last one. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a little like and hit that subscribe button if you want to. But seriously, thank you guys for all the support in this series. It's been awesome, so thanks. Have a great day.